And to put an end to all the speculation, like how much of that did have to do with Alexa? I'm Cam's biggest fan ever. Go! It's me, Alexa. Alexa. This is potentially Cam's kicks back with Alexa. How did this like happen? Like I like walked up to you at sneaker con and now we're going to yeah, your now we're over right now. Ask me up, Alexa. No. Did you feel pressure, kind of like with such a rapid growing audience, and then? Your new store is only going to be better because now you know. You know, there are things posted on social media and everything else like that where people kind of divided. Honestly, was a lot of luck. It all seemed great, but the answer is going to be no. Didn't end well for you guys? Just the company that you worked no. with? No. No. Not no. 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 Five times more. Like, I still wouldn't do it. I'd Cam's Kicks is still, like, somewhat marketable. My best month ever, I was doing a quarter of a million dollars in sales. And Did you expect the amount of sort of backlash that you kind of got? My business was failing, and I didn't want it. 40, 50,000 in expenses, and people don't even believe that, but I, I literally was. Couldn't even necessarily tell you what it is. How does it feel to have your previous employees now working for that company? Uh, um... Hey guys, welcome to the Air It Out podcast. So before we get into this podcast, I just want to let you guys know that this was filmed about a month and a half ago, but it's still a very well done interview, so big shout out to Open Air. Make sure to check out their channel. And it answers a lot of questions that you guys have been wondering, so I'm glad to finally put this out there. And yeah, you guys were right. There's a lot of things you guys were right about, and I'm addressing it on here. And I'm going to go more into depth on Monday's video. I'm making an apology video for all the wrong that I've done, and just really taking accountability for it. So this was kind of before I really realized a lot of things, so this is why I'm not the proudest of a couple of the answers on here, but I still wanted to release it for you guys. I think it's a very well done video and I'm going to be addressing some more on Monday. So stay tuned for that guys. And yeah, check out that gnarly sunburn, but uh, yeah, let's, let's get into it guys. <laughs> We have a special episode for you guys today. We have a guest, our oh. first you guest. You guys have a guest? Yeah. I can yeah. tell. Who is this guy? Are we talking about what we have on feet today, I think you said? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Get into it. So today I have the ALD New Balance 550s on feet. Now, I've been rocking a pair of shoes for a while, as a lot of people saw. I've just been wearing my Turtle Tough Yeezys, so I was like, I finally got to get another pair of personals, switch it up a little bit. So I put these on. Uh, I really like the neutral color blocking. So it's just a shoe that I've grown to like. And I finally found a steel price. Shout out to Kix Boomin. Picked them up there for like $100 on your market. So I was like, I couldn't pass it up. So cool. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I like Kim's doing my job for me. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm wearing the Concord 11s. These are a classic. I've wanted these shoes since I was like in seventh grade. These are very comfortable. I undies them today. Wow. Um, okay. And I love them. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Martavius, owner of Open Air. Um, I have on the cheap Travis Scotts today, um, but they are better than the Travis Scotts. Um, these Travis are the mochas. Scott. I love these because they're coffee color. I love anything kind of coffee color and like that, you know, just that brown. Different uh, neutral earth tones right now. It's what I'm in love with. Coffee so. color or mocha color? Mocha is coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a little bit different of an episode. We won't get into sneaker news today. We're just going to focus on Cam no and his story. News? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wanted some sneaker news. No, no. <laughs> this is Cam news. I think from the perspective of you know us owning the store, it's just it's a new perspective. I exactly, yeah. it's a new yeah. perspective to kind of ask you questions. You know, because we might think about things in a different way. Than exactly. A group of people that haven't experienced kind of you know all the rigmarole with employees and kind of everything goes into you know owning a business. I've been reselling sneakers since I was in like ninth grade, so a freshman in high school. So been doing it. Probably going on about six years now. So I know that you've been reselling for a while, but when did your love for sneakers start? Eighth grade. So like the time right before I started reselling. Mm -hmm. So my friend got me into sneakers in eighth grade. He came to the bus stop actually with, <laughs> with a pair of Jordans and they were just some Flight 23. Shout out to Kyle. Yeah. And yeah, it, I was just like, wow, those shoes are dope. I, I looked up to him a lot. So I was like, I kind of wanted to be like him. So I went on eBay that night and ended up buying like a very similar pair of <laughs> yeah, shoes. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't cool back then if two dudes were wearing the same shoes, so he wasn't <laughs> the, the happiest of that yeah. decision. But yeah. that's that's what kind of got me into sneakers, started Beautiful. watching YouTube. Because I, I love YouTube and I still do love YouTube and watch some sneaker YouTubers on there growing up. Right. And 
yeah, that's really kind of how I got into sneakers. Gotcha. Okay. From following you, um, mm-hmm. I know that you saved up from reselling and like mm-hmm. working right at Chick Fil A, right? Yep, at Chick Fil A. Yeah. Yep. So um, eventually, to open up your first store, mm-hmm. um, at what point of operating that store did your social media and YouTube like really kind of start to blow up? Um, so it was insane, and honestly, just such a blessing. Within two to three months, I just gained probably around sixty thousand subscribers, yeah. if I remember okay. correctly. And the, so and the one that really took traction was like your buyback videos for the most. Yeah, just yeah. coming at, customers coming in me, cashing out on sneakers, pretty much was what really gained traction because I've been doing YouTube for years honestly like I've always been into filmmaking and creating videos so like I never did it consistently like I would just make dumb videos like short films or something with my friends or just stupid things honestly and just upload them they wouldn't get any views at all and then finally I was like you know what I just had graduated high school moved to Pennsylvania because my dad had got a job there and I'm like I'm gonna start taking this seriously so I started uploading weekly videos and gained probably about 500 subscribers doing it for a few months. Uh, st- I don't remember when I started exactly, but I want to say it was around August of 2020 and I opened my store, my first store that I had in uh, October of 2020. So that's okay. kind of wow. how I started with that. Okay. That's cool. I'm going to go off the script a little bit. Um, I was just going to ask, how did you set up that camera? Um, this is how it's going to look when the customers come in to sell shoes. So you can see the counter and then that wall over there. And then I can obviously show you guys the shoes. What made you think where you were going to yeah. place the camera, and like what made you like do film that? Because no I, I sneaker store. I don't want to say it was luck, but it, yeah. it honestly was a lot of luck. I was always into sneakers. I was in the sneaker YouTube and all that, and I was a big fan of Round Two. They okay. really kind of started the sneaker YouTube like store content, and they hadn't been doing it for a little bit. Shout out to Round Two. Yeah, Round Two yeah. did it first. Yeah. yeah Anytime you see anything, Round Two they did it first. They started the buy sell trade. <laughs> yeah resale yeah. sneaker store yeah. so that's they're really what started it all and so i used to go to round two in richmond virginia their original store mm-hmm. and it's sad to see it go unfortunately they closed that one but yeah. i used to go there like with a lot of my inventory trying to like get some trades and get some different inventory because they have very fair prices and they also pay very fair so just a great mixture of both and so i i looked up to them and i wanted to kind of do my own content, but like a little bit of a different twist. So I was like, why don't I just film every single interaction with the customer if they buy a pair of shoes, if they want to sell me a pair of shoes, a trade, whatever it is, or if they just want to come in and say what's up or just whatever it is. So I was like, I'll just make it simple. I, I didn't have any extravagant camera at all. I just had a GoPro, got a tripod, put it in the corner to kind of show the main part of the store and the counter where I stood at. And that was really the whole idea behind that. Nothing mm-hmm. crazy at all. And that's why people liked it. It was so raw and natural and I just, didn't really edit it much at the time because I was just kind of learning how to edit. I edited all my own videos. I didn't know much about editing, just taught myself throughout the last couple of years. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Your social media blew up pretty much right away with opening yeah. the store. Did you feel pressure kind of like with such a rapid growing audience and then trying to operate like a brand new, your first time ever operating a business? Yeah, it, it, definitely, like? it definitely was a lot of pressure. In school, I was never popular. I didn't have very good social skills. And if you go back and see my old videos, you can definitely see that. I've definitely... Feel like I've grown a lot throughout the last couple of years and progressed and obviously I'm still working on it everyone has stuff they can work on so it definitely was a lot I think it was a really cool experience and mm-hmm. I am blessed to be in the position I'm in so I yeah. think it's I think it's really cool honestly how did that affect your pressure like like having that pressure on like decision making like did you feel like if you didn't have that audience you would kind of you know have done something a certain way but you're like oh but everyone what is everyone going to think about this like yeah to to an extent like i try to tell myself as much as i can that i don't care what people think but deep down i think everyone to an extent does care what people Mm -hmm. think so it could be a lot at times but i always tried to make the best decisions i could even if they weren't the best decisions but if you make a bad decision obviously the most important thing is that you learn from it and that's something that i've definitely learned over the last couple years so right so you have your store here yeah in pennsylvania And then at what point did you make up your mind that you kind of wanted to move to Dallas, expand the store, that sort of thing? And to put an end to all the speculation, like how much of that did have to do with Alexa? You know, a girl you met um, at SneakerCon, you know, you guys became close friends, um, you know, and she does live in Dallas. Right. No, I mean, I've kind of like gone around it a lot Mm -hmm. and just kind of like denied it. But I mean, I don't really care anymore. So I went to Dallas SneakerCon in May of 2021 and it was just like, one of the best sneaker shows I've ever been to. I spent 60 grand there. I was at a very good time in my business, able to have very good cash flow, move a lot of inventory. So it was just crazy. I got so much support there. And obviously, like you said, I I did meet her. So I thought that was really cool. And we grew a very good friendship over the time. And yeah, that definitely did have a part in the decision. I'm not going to say it didn't. So part in the decision, bruh. Okay. I'm watching this back. I did not answer the question directly. Yes. 
Yes, for everyone speculating, yes, she had to do with it. It was not her entirely. There was ulterior motives. That's a big word there. But uh, yes, she was a main reason of it. And uh, let's get back into the video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so were you kind of planning on her working as closely with you? Because she kind of became an employee, right? Or Yeah, it's funny how that happened. I actually never really thought of her like that, but she just showed her work ethic and it was like something I haven't seen from other mm -hmm. people. So she kind of earned that herself without me even really thinking of that at first. So yeah. Right. At this point you're in Dallas, um, mm -hmm. preparing your second location. Um, but one of your main employees is like a kind of abruptly let go this, you know, there are things posted on social media and everything else like that. I feel like this was like a pivotal moment for you and your audience where people kind of divided yeah. um, in that, in that way. And that hadn't happened before. So how did it feel to have such an internal, like, employee sort of situation like on display you know i want to say to an extent like i was used to it because obviously everything you had had an audience I, yeah sort of stuff has been out there before kind of what happens and stuff but it, it was different i don't know it just it, it was a big learning experience right. and like starbucks or something you're not gonna post when they like COVID employees yeah. so it's, yeah. it's just when everything's out there it's just so so much different than how like a regular business operates but like i said i am used to it at this point and mm -hmm. it's just a big learning experience definitely going to be hiring employees in a much different manner yeah once yeah. i am going to be hiring again in the future so right and how does how what tell me more about that mindset that you kind of have now just with yeah with as far as what just with hiring you know with with managing employees like anything you would do differently like yeah one thing i would say that's a lesson for me and that a lot of people do say is you don't want to hire your friends because mm -hmm. that can cause a lot of internal issues and I really want to put more thought and more of a big process into hiring whenever I yeah. do it in the future I'm not going to just hire anyone because you really want to have the right employee that could be stealing from you luckily I never really had any stealing from me but I did have a lot of people that kind of turned their back on me kind of were talking about me behind my back and just mm -hmm. screwed me over ultimately so it's not something I want to go through again obviously I, I mean you might have to but right. yeah I don't know, did you do like an interview process beforehand? I actually I, really knew I that. did a little bit. I mean, it was kind of just people that had come into the store a lot and were reselling and I didn't do a huge process. I mean, I did start interviewing people for other positions down the line, but I didn't at first because that was my first big business I was operating. I didn't know how to properly do it. I was right. learning mm -hmm. for myself and had to right. go through a lot of hard le lessons to actually learn the right way to do it so right yeah. okay now you have your store in dallas you yep. have your store in pennsylvania you say so far was kind of that you were unable to like financially support two stores yeah um do you still stand by your decision to close the pa store or in retrospect is there something more you could have done or that you wish you would have done yeah i think honestly i shouldn't have ever expanded at all i mean i wouldn't say not expanded but to halfway across the country was a bad decision and another hard lesson i had to learn from mm -hmm. because York, the York store was what really made me. All the East Coast customers were very great clientele and that's what really brought the business together. So to close that, it definitely didn't make sense. If I hadn't have closed that, I might have still been around today with the store and everything. So yeah, the lease was ending on that. So it's not like I just broke a lease. So I just had got this new store. So I was like, why don't I just invest all my time and yeah. money into this one? But it just, it didn't work out. So. Yeah. So, and the lease was ending on your York store. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you just I, didn't renew the lease. Yeah. I just had a couple months left. So I was right. like, I might as well just close this and put all my eggs in one basket instead of trying to jumble too many things at once. Right. Exactly. Right. Just in terms of like closing the PA location, like, did you expect the amount of sort of backlash that you kind of got? Like the audience? I didn't know how it would be if it would be as bad as it was necessarily but i assumed because obviously that's what made me and i, I did think it would get some backlash and yeah it's just something you have to deal with i couldn't not make a decision because i would think it might get backlash like you can't make your decisions based right. on that so. right yeah i think i think it's yeah more people like kind of made you know, people probably felt like oh like you're forgetting kind of like where you came from yeah kind of that's thing, that's so. how it's seen it didn't yeah. come across the right way and yeah. that's something throughout this youtube journey that's happened a lot is i didn't come across the right way and it offends this person or that person but i just learned at the end of the day you can't please everyone you just have to keep doing your own thing and do what will make you successful and set you up for success ultimately and not yeah. care yeah. about what every little person says about this and that so when you yeah. when you moved to to dallas yeah did you did your york store start to suffer because it of that did. move yeah, yeah. A, a lot because i brought all the good inventory to the dallas okay. store and people stopped coming as much they started going less and they weren't really bringing pairs anymore and then when they did they wouldn't get cashed out heavy because it was hard to maintain the cash flow and manage mm -hmm. it between two stores yeah. so just a lot of problems that 
came up very quickly. So, right. yeah. how, how much of it did you think was inventory based versus like now Cam's not there anymore? Yeah. You know, because you're kind of it was it was a big mixture of both because yeah. mm -hmm. once I finally do open another store and do it the right way, which I do plan on doing within the next few months. I don't know if you had a question sure. about that, but of we'll, course I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that at some point. But yeah, like people, it was such an honor and a blessing, like to have people driving at one point 10, 15, 20 hours just to come see me and sell shoes to me and met all these great people. It was such a cool experience. So if I'm not even there and people were so unsure and it just created a lot of problems and people didn't really want to come as much anymore the traffic slowed down because yeah. yeah, I really don't think it was the best location. I could have been set up pretty much anywhere and people would have still came to see me and sell their collection. And that was why well, I will say too, one of my biggest problems was always like everyone and even still everyone wants to sell to me, but not everyone wants to buy. So like I could mm, right. buy all the mm -hmm. shoes in the world, but I don't have all the money in the world. So mm -hmm. it's like, how am I going to sell them? That's always been kind right. of an issue with that. And that's so. kind of, you're known for like, buying shit. Yeah, yeah. Buying again, so then yeah. like if I'm saying we're only doing store credit for that store because right. we didn't have the cash flow, people don't want to come because they don't want to just trade their shoes. They want to be yeah. cashed out because I opened around COVID and I know a lot of stores did open then everything was closed down and I was one of the only stores cashing out in the area within hours surrounding right. like New York, New Jersey, none of those stores were buying. So like yeah. I was one of the only ones doing it. Nah. Closing New York store was kind of like in a sense, it felt like the beginning of the end in terms of like all of the yeah. rest of the things that happened. Um, yeah. Do you wish you would have done more to keep that store open? I do at times wish I would have just kept it over. Sometimes I'll just go back and watch old videos like, dang, like I never knew how good I had it until it's gone. Like, I don't know if you've heard like the expression, like you never know how much you miss something until it's gone. Right. Type oh, yeah. of thing. So yeah, it's like, yeah. I don't want to say I wouldn't have done it because I think I needed to learn all these hard lessons early on mm -hmm. to get to the point where now I have a blank slate and I'm just going to start over and do it the right way. So I think I needed to learn that lesson or I would have done not the same mistakes, but different ones that could have led to, who knows, maybe worse scenarios or yeah. maybe not as bad. But you, I mean, you never know. That's why you can't change the past and you just have to learn. I keep saying it, but it's just I'm really trying to put that in my mind that I just need to learn from definitely the, yeah, the yeah. mistakes I've made so yeah. your new store is only going to be better because now you know you know what I'm saying what exactly. to look for so. and you also know like what not to do exactly. yeah, yeah. And, and I've been traveling all, all across the country like I've said I've seen at least 100 stores now probably so I know get little bits and pieces of all of them and kind of put my own twist on it and do it how I think would be good yeah. to see yeah. vision so and and kind of like we were talking about you know before we started recording is like it's normal to be doing really well mm -hmm. and believe in your brand and believe in what you're doing and then want to open up another location, you know? I mean, yeah, people come in yeah. here all the time and assume that we have like five. Yeah. So a lot of the sort of criticism regarding like just opening the store in Dallas. I think I should have opened a second location, it but might have not just been a timing. so far. Yeah, or that. More. It should yeah. have been somewhere else on the East Coast. Right, mm -hmm. right. Like even if you wanted to do something like in Boston or something. Yeah. I don't know the East Coast. I don't even know if that's close. Yeah, that's on the East Coast. But, that's nowhere close. Okay, but, okay. Yeah. Like maybe like or Maryland whatever. or like or, somewhere okay. around there. Would yeah. Be good. Or, yeah. Even another location in Pennsylvania, honestly, yeah. would have been the best. Yeah, yeah. Best obviously, it's, it's hard to manage. Like, you probably could only what talk on the phone, do you know, like, it, right? Like, yeah, like it's just yeah. Like, and it got to such a bad point where I was barely. It just seemed like I didn't care about that at all, and just mm -hmm. had other people handling it. I just I should have handled my own stuff from the beginning because if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. What was that like managing an employee like a thousand or employees like a thousand miles away? Uh, it, it was difficult. Like, what did that at, look like? Were you times, like calling I mean, them every day, or what yeah. did it kind of? I tried to call them as much as I could. Mm -hmm. So, at, like I said, I wasn't doing the best job at it. Sometimes I wouldn't call them for a few days or a week or something. So it, it got bad at times. I didn't do it properly, and yeah. One thing though is I did pay them very well, like way more than an average company was paying in the area or something yeah. like that. Right. And yeah. I. I I think I did treat them very well, but it's just I didn't get the most respect that I deserved probably mm -hmm. just because I was so young and mm -hmm. all my employees were older than me, so they're like, why would I listen to this guy? You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that can be tough as young business owners. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, we're a little older than you, but we're still yeah. mid yeah. mid twenties. Yeah, um, mid -20s. yeah. And yeah. our employees are around our age, so yeah. it's kind of like you know, yeah. We're yeah. All, yeah. I was only eighteen at the time when I opened my first store, so yeah. I wasn't really looking for. I mean, I wasn't looking for employees at all for at least a little while, mm -hmm. but yeah, they, all my employees were older than me, so. Okay. Yeah. You have the Dallas store open for a couple of months, and then you're kind of approached in this like roundabout way by this company, mm -hmm. um, and they have an interesting, you know, proposal for you. Um, yes. Very before we get into the proposal and kind of what they put out there on the table, 
How was business going this point at the Dallas store? Just business overall, it wasn't going very well. It was right. kind of- And you're still doing online too, down. right? So yeah, I was, but even the online was terrible. Yeah. It wasn't what it once was. I was, my best month ever, I was doing a quarter of a million dollars in sales and yeah. it wasn't even a fraction of that. Some months I didn't even break a hundred thousand. So it was just not even comparable. So it was just tough. The business was already going down. The mm -hmm. expenses were through the roof. Payroll for employees was like, 20 grand at one point because yeah. I, like I said, I paid them very well, you which did. is a little too well and yeah. uh, ultimately couldn't afford that. And just all these expenses adding up ran just as store owners, I'm sure you, right. you, yeah. you would yeah. know. Just, Your overhead was yeah. accumulating. And I was still traveling a ton too. So travel expenses are ridiculous as well. Yeah. And yeah. just so many things adding up and making it. Cause I was at one point paying like 40, 50,000 in expenses and people don't even believe that, but I, I literally was. Yeah. And yeah. I was only making 10, 15, 20,000 in profit. So right. I was just losing Isn't so right? much money and depleting yeah. my business because when I had first opened the Dallas store, and I don't even think this was the peak of my inventory, but my inventory was worth around 230,000. When I ended up closing Dallas, I sold it off for 45 grand. So I just had lost so much money, literally wow. lost hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of a few months. So right. it, was, right. it was scary. Yeah. yeah. And so closing the York store didn't, didn't ultimately financially unburden you that much? No, no, because I still had a lot of employees still paying a lot of expenses. So it right. cut some, yes, yeah. but not nearly enough. Not was your traction close. in Dallas good at all? Did you kind of build no. a clientele now? <laughs> Honestly, no. I mean, I, I built some clientele and that's good you said that. This is one thing I, I want to touch on too. When I first started the store, like I said, I didn't know anything. Right. Wasn't didn't really know much about business or anything and just loved sneakers and loved making videos and stuff so it took a lot learning this like over the course of a couple of years that connections are probably one of the most valuable things that you can have in business and I wasn't building any connections at first because I was just kind of all right, let me just buy this customer. It doesn't really matter. Not buy that. Like buy shoes from this customer. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. It was matter more transactional. Very yeah, valuable. I was just one minded. Let me just get this one deal over yeah. with so I can get back to what I'm doing kind of thing. And now it's yeah. like, you really want to build these connections, get contacts. Like that's what I've really been doing. I've built more connections over the last couple months than I have in a couple of years. Wow. So it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's just something that is very valuable. So yeah, the customer experience is like super important. That's yeah. something like even here, like we're like big on, you know what I'm saying? We have people who, you know, they'll come shop with you just because of the way that you treat them and you know, exactly. you want to treat them not respect, every store you know. gives them that experience. Some exactly. are very standoffish yeah. and they'll yeah. they'll tell you that and say, I like coming to your store over this store because because of this or that, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What yeah. was the question again? I think Well I it was just it was that. more so getting to the to the the way they approached you, but I just wanted to kinda of know how Dallas was going. So Yeah, okay, so going back to that. So right. as far as how Dallas was going, like there was some great clientele and obviously there was some people that came in and made some deals and stuff but yeah. the market there and I learned that very quickly is much different than the East Coast market they buy other stores because there was way too much competition in the area as well because literally in Dallas there's probably close to 10 stores within the Metroplex it's like different smaller cities around it probably close to 10 stores so yeah. mm -hmm. other stores would pay so much higher because they would sell so much higher but my mm -hmm. business model has always been selling under market or trying to have more fair prices and that is one thing though people would come into the store a lot and say, wow, your prices are so fair. I went to this store and that store and your prices are so much cheaper than theirs. But then when they want to sell their shoes, it's tough because some stores pay close to StockX ask. And then sell them for 150 Sell them for 150 over, yeah. over yeah. StockX. But I would pay just StockX payout so I could sell it around ask or maybe yeah. sometimes even a little bit lower than ask. So yeah. it, was, it was tough. But yeah, that's kind of how the store was going at that point. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think that I think that kind of shows too how important like the customer was to you. And obviously yeah. when you have a business that is the number one focus is like, mm -hmm. you have a good relationship with all these guys that come in and, and sell stuff, Yeah. Um, but it's a little bit tough to kind of honor that and then also like get give the customers what they want. It is, because you have to run a business at and the end of the day. And that's yeah. what so many people don't yeah. understand. They're like, oh, you love all this guy, you did this, that. That's why you just can't care what people think because you yeah. have to run a business and right. they don't understand all the overhead. And even now, like people are like, oh, you're low blowing that guy, you don't have any overhead. I still have a lot of overhead. I'm still in the lease for, Dallas that I haven't got out of yet. I still have thousands and thousands of travel travel expenses. So it's mm -hmm. it's just like 
people will never understand unless they're actually you and actually running a business like right. the same yeah. way yeah. as yours. Right. So it's actually good to to hear too, just like that perspective on um, you, like saying your prices, you know, is good, yeah. Yeah. and like people don't want to sell to you basically, or like they will rather go to another store yeah. and pay them higher because that's the, kind of the same thing we do and here. That that was the big so, thing yeah. in York because there wasn't any other store close around, so mm -hmm. everyone would have to come to me and kind of mm -hmm. take whatever price. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a good thing with that. Yeah, and yeah. I think um, you know I want to shout out uh, Sean Wither. Been, you know, I think he talks mm -hmm. a lot about having having a store and then having stores just like his and how the competition at first you could kind so of so many people copied his business yeah. model. However, yeah. Sean was really enthusiastic about that actually and was like, the more stores around me, the better because now look, everyone goes to Melrose for shoes. You yeah. know, he almost kind There's of created how many this like, Melrose now? He, probably like ten just on the same oh, block. Probably 10, 10, probably 15. 15 yeah. Yeah. It's insane. He created this little town of like resale shops. So I think that that's like an it's interesting all about perspective. take on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, but obviously when it comes to now, how it's so oversaturated, the sneaker market, it is. like the Sean Witherspoon sort of thing, the round two thing that was going on maybe 10 years ago, like that was great for them then. Yeah. But I think now it's like- It's changed like, so much. Yeah. Since, yeah. You either have to adapt or mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to move on with everything that's going, so. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We kind of know kind of where the Dallas store was at at this point. So yep. when you are approached, how did that feel? Like, what was your initial, like, knee-jerk reaction? My initial reaction was, like, I, I was very skeptical because my employees had first been approached by them. I wasn't just directly approached by them. And mm -hmm. Danny had come back because they had flew him out there to, like, a grand opening. And yeah. he just told me how crazy he was. And he's like, the owner or CEO owner, whatever it is, wants to actually speak with you. And I was like, about what? And he's like, I don't really know. He just wants to talk to you. So hmm. I was like, I mean, what's the worst that could happen type of thing, I guess, all I'd have to do is have a phone call so I think we set it up with yeah. probably the next day if I remember right and just had the call with him he just told me about this rapidly expanding business they're trying to open a new store every month how many stores we'll have 19 open 19 so do you think you can make 20 possible I don't know I'll, I'll see so <laughs> we actually have it set up we can open up a new store every 25 days it's insane just like it's unbelievable stuff so he wanted me to come out and see it for myself he flew me out to their Tampa store during the weekend so they did a lot in sales and yeah, it's just like it it all seemed great, but in reality was it really and is that the best thing for me and the answer is gonna be no ultimately. Mm -hmm. So what was the offer on the table? Yeah. Like hey What what made you like, you know, like well, like really like interested in it? Yeah, yeah, so I mean my business was failing and I didn't wanna just be known as selling out, but it was like if I had, had continued at that rate and hadn't drastically changed something, I think I would have been bankrupt within a few more months going at that pace. Mm -hmm. Like you can't you can only afford to lose so much money until the money's just gone. Like right. I never course, got yeah. like a business loan or anything like that. So right. I couldn't afford to keep up with it. And yeah. I was at that time looking into if I should get a business loan, if that would help me or something. So maybe I could have tried that, that could have worked, but mm -hmm. probably not. I probably would have just spent a lot more and just ended up losing it all. So I thought it'd be the best way to just kind of get out of everything. And I thought it'd be a fresh start. And yeah. mm -hmm. basically just that, they would buy out all my inventory okay. and I thought I was gonna get more help like getting bought out of my lease. Let me, let me buy your store, let me get you out of Dallas and maybe I'll open you up some big mega store. There was no help with any of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would get a small relocation bonus, I guess, but I mean, everyone got that there wasn't anything special, so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, and then the offer was just a high salary with like commission and this and that. And then the initial offer was to get 10% of my YouTube revenue for no buying, which is the dumbest thing ever because that's just, you can't put a price on a yeah. platform like yeah. that. And then yeah. ended up being that we would split the YouTube revenue, but still there was no buy-in. So it was just a terrible offer. And so earlier you said you had 230 grand of shoes. Yeah. When I opened um, Dallas in November. Yeah. 2021. 20, okay, so then you selling around 40, was that the same number of shoes or did you no, have way, no, no, way no, less no. shoes? No, so it was way less shoes. Okay, so and, you're speaking to more so like the yeah, number of Yeah, so in, the, of they said they were gonna buy out my inventory, which they did, I, I had, I paid 40,000 for the inventory I had at that mm -hmm. time. It was like a hundred something pairs probably, I don't, nothing crazy at all. Right, right. Selling it for 50,000, they pretty much put it in half of my price of what I paid and my full profit. So I got like 45 for it. And yeah. that was all the inventory I had. I had no inventory left after that. So yeah. it's like, yeah. yeah, it's just scary to think that I had 230 worth of inventory to, usually when you sell a business, like sell a business, I didn't actually sell it. Like mm -hmm. there was no monetary exchange for my actual brand. But usually when you sell a business, you're cashing out big, like millions of dollars. Like to think I, worked that hard for all that time just to sell my business for $45,000. Like it's like pennies to mm -hmm. what it should be worth. But obviously there's so many bad decisions that went into that, that 
ultimately led to that. So in that point, you you felt more or less like a little desperate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how did you how did you equate just selling your shoes? Because I know that rent was on the was on the offer as well, right? Something about them paying your rent. No. I, okay. I mean, I. It was tough. Like I just assumed more so, like mm -hmm. buying out my brand and this and that, that I would get more. But I just so the only transaction ever was just for shoes. Yes. Correct. Wow. Okay. okay well, yeah. yeah. So yeah. nothing for my brand, nothing for my YouTube channel, okay. nothing to help me with legal situations, nothing yeah. to help me with my lease. So. Well, this brings me right into my biggest question. Okay. And like you know, as viewers ourselves, you know, we've watched you um, for like over a year. The most surprising thing was like the name change, right, across like all mm -hmm. platforms. Yeah. Um, so obviously you worked really hard to build your brand and you're mm -hmm. successful at it. And there's no just like one recipe to do that, right? Yeah. So you found a little way that you did it. Like you said, you switched it yeah, up. Yeah, and I couldn't even necessarily tell you what it is. Like there's exactly. no exact thing exactly. to do. Yeah. It's just yeah. a lot of trial yeah. and error. So I guess before we get into your your decision behind doing it um, or your reasoning behind doing it, tell me what the conversation was like them asking you to change your name. Well, again, it's just so broad. There wasn't anything like you have to do this, you have to do this. It was just because okay. even the contract that I got from them, it wasn't like a very professionally written thing. Hmm. It, either party can terminate it at any time for any reason. So it's an at will employee contract. So nothing like very legally binding. So mm -hmm. it's like, it was just kind of more so talk and what we had discussed. And it was, so we just changed, I just changed the YouTube channel name. Since I sold Cam's Kicks, I just changed the name of my Instagram just mm -hmm. to my actual name, which is Cameron Peroni or something. Mm -hmm. like, I, I mean, something along the lines of what, with my name on it. So I didn't yeah. have Cam's Kicks anymore. So it just felt like to everyone. That's what everyone thought is that I sold out, sold the business out for like millions of dollars. Right. And like, it's just not realistic. Like it, I don't know what it could or couldn't have been worth with my debts and things that I owed and just expenses, but obviously I, it wasn't worth any of that. And people were like, wow, congrats, Ken, for selling your business. And like people would come up to me at shows and stuff like, congrats for selling your business. And I'm like, just stay, I mean, obviously I, I played along with it. And it's like, thank you, thank you. I appreciate the support and all that. But like right. deep down I was yeah. thinking like, congrats to what? To selling out and working two years just to sell off your business mm -hmm. for 45 grand when yeah. you could have been worth a few million. It's so tough when you put your name to a brand, it doesn't make it very sellable. And ultimately the goal for a business is to make it sellable. You want to be able to sell your business. So Cam's Kicks is so hard to sell. Like no matter what it was, like I would probably have to work for someone for a year, year and a half and slowly distance myself for the brand until they would do it. But yeah. most of the time when people do that, their brand just completely dies after the main face of the business just mm -hmm. leaves it. So Well your business is interesting because you have a you have a business where yeah. you where people buy and sell shoes. Yeah. And then you're also like an influencer. Yeah. You know? No. So you've got kind of this double action here that people wish they had. You know, mm -hmm. because if they had that, they'd have move you know, money coming in from here and there and yeah. whatever and people are like fame hungry and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and, and so what I was know. getting to too is when I do open a new store, because I am gonna open one, mm -hmm. uh, the name's not gonna be Cam's Kicks. Of course I'm not gonna change my YouTube channel name ever, but yeah. the store I don't wanna call it Cam's Kicks. I yeah. don't know what it is yet, but it's it's just not gonna be called with my name, like not gonna have my name in the right from my perspective. I think Cam's Kicks is still like somewhat marketable, you know what I'm saying? Because of what yeah. Savannah's saying, you are you are your own entity and you have a business, so that could also bring people in. So, mm -hmm. you know, just from our my perspective, that's how I see it as a you know outsider. If you ever wonder, you know, yeah. kind of, I think it's a marketable thing, so yeah, 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 yeah. it's just, you know, getting back to kind of the name change, your decision to change the name was more or less just you kind of being like. Well, in my head, I sold my business, so I'm going to change the name to that place. Yeah, and just right? what I had discussed with so the they didn't tell you we to gonna, do it. No, they did. Oh, they, they did, did oh, tell me, okay. but it wasn't written in a contract. You have to change it. Like it wasn't like that. Okay, but okay, it was okay. just kind of talking about it, saying Got that it. that's kind of what the plan was. So I just okay. went along with it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Did you expect? Like, I think if there's anything that's happened with you so far, I think that was the point where most people were like. Dude, yeah, did no, you expect I, that level of it? Because I know you kind of said you regretted it like right away. Yeah, I mean, always there's a potential to something. I didn't know to what extent it would be, mm -hmm. but there's a pretty strong chance with that. People were already dropping off and not really caring anymore. And after that, so many people were like, yeah, I'm just done. I didn't subscribe to see some guy work at a store. It just feels like I'm watching a Foot Locker employee or just, just another employee. They subscribed because they were motivated by me and yeah. wanted to, like you keep saying, like they wanted to open their own sneaker store or something like that. Right. And mm -hmm. just this guy that works for a store, like that's not very interesting. Like who wants to see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, people like maybe have supporters, maybe they just felt like, you know, disappointed, like, yeah. mm -hmm. you they know, did, definitely. so. 
Yeah. You kind of said you like immediately regretted your decision mm -hmm. once you saw those comments start flowing in yeah. um, just after you announced everything. I, I so did. before you announced it, did you have any hesitations or like red flags? Um, before I announced what? Like just your partnership with that company where you kind of... Um, I don't really know. Like I said, because it was just so tough, all the things I was going through and not everyone, I mean, I don't expect them to, but they didn't understand what it exactly right. was. So. Mm -hmm. I just going through at the Dallas store, like all the yeah, stores. not even Dallas. Just I mean, yes, Dallas, but just everything is a full yeah. spectrum together. Just everything that has amounted, like I had amounted to throughout the course of that, and just just everything overall. So I don't know. Like I expected it to not be the best, but I didn't think it would go as bad as it did. And yeah, you know, I mean, how did your employees feel like about that that decision? Uh, I mean, Danny and. Ronnie, they they were for it because okay, I, not that they didn't believe they in me. They kind of knew the position they, you they were. They did in. believe in me, but they were always probably worried because their job wasn't guaranteed. They didn't have security because hmm. they saw how the business was and we had, had meetings about it and what we were going to do and never really executed it correctly and just kept okay. going down and then would keep backtracking. So it was right. like they had both been offered by the company to work for them, so they were already for it and. They might get paid more. Who knows? I don't. I don't know. So yeah. I mean, they they were pretty much for it. So I didn't really have any huge people telling me uh -huh. like not to do it. I mean, my dad thought it was sketchy at first, but he's like, you might as well see the opportunity, see if it's worth see it. it. And yeah. If you hate it, you can always go back or right. something that type of thing. But, yeah. 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 And you know, who knows? They could have been. You know, I don't want to say genuine people. Maybe it just didn't end well for you guys. Just the company that you worked no, with. No, not genuine. Yeah. People no. At all. no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So since we are kind of talking about, you know, I guess the end at this point, how did that very short relationship with you two end? I literally worked there for probably less than two weeks. It was yeah. already progressing. Like the first day I started working there, I was like, like, what did I do? I'm just, I'm not an employee. I've worked so hard mm -hmm. to get to this point. I can't just backtrack so much. Even yeah. if I was- So you felt that difference like right yeah, now? Yeah, and it, it wasn't even about the money. Even if I got paid, I don't I'll just say a number five times more, like I still wouldn't do it. I'd rather, even if, and this is what I'm at, where I'm at at this point, basically, mm -hmm. starting not ground zero, but close to it. I mean, luckily I still have some following. It's just, it's declined a lot, but there's still some supporters and I appreciate them a lot. So just, I'd rather just start over and build something from the ground up again and just make it bigger than the original location ever was that I had and not try to branch off, keep the location for as long as I can and just keep reinvesting, not take out money and just try to build it as big as I can because right. it's not about short term, it's about long term and setting yourself up and I wouldn't be set up just working for a company. I mean, yeah, I could have started saving money and this and that, but I want to be building a brand and not building someone else's brand. So yeah. 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 What was it like telling your employees that you were closing it out or like everything was just final, final done? Well, at that point I only had Danny and Ronnie and then I had Alexa. Right. She was the only one that was really heard from it because she worked so hard and helped me yeah. through all the things and yeah. like put in more work than anyone else did, not even expecting compensation for it or anything. So it's like it hurt her, but Ultimately, she was okay with it, and mm -hmm. Danny and Ronnie didn't really care because they were just gonna go get this new job that yeah. I had gotten them the opportunity to. So yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So let's just jump to that. How does it feel to have your previous employees now working for that company? Uh, I mean, I don't really care that much. I mean, yeah, it's their own life. I don't care what they do at this point. But it's like, it is kind of crazy if you sit th sit back and think about it. Like, wow, like just all these opportunities I've presented people with just through knowing me. Like it's, I don't know, it's just a weird feeling. Like I, I, I'm just a regular guy. Like I don't, it's, it's a blessing, everything that's happened, even if things didn't go the best, I've definitely learned a lot and mm -hmm. now know the way to success a lot more than I did yeah. starting off, so. Yeah, because I know in another video you had said you felt like taken advantage of from yeah, this company. Yeah, to an extent. I mean, yeah. I, I've been taken advantage of by a lot of people and more and more. Right, well not, yeah, I guess I didn't mean not necessarily by them, but just by that, by the company that you were working with um, yeah. for that really short period of time. Yeah. Um, what made you feel so taken advantage of? Like how, in what way did you feel like I mean, betrayed they, by them? All they care about is trying to grow their exposure and make their brand as big as possible, trying to kill off all the small mom and mom and pop shops yeah. type of thing like they don't they just want to take over an industry and run it like it's an auto industry which it's not mm -hmm. they're, they're not for the culture at all they don't care about yeah. their yeah. customers it's just a big investment group sitting back being like oh what's our next get rich 
quick scheme type right. of thing. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's not sustainable. It's just a matter of time. It's yeah. just how long is it going to last? You, you can only do that for so long and succeed. So yeah, yeah. And the thing about business is it's not quick. <laughs> yeah. like, it's not. Yeah. It's you're not you like people that want to open a store yeah. and like you know it's, make yeah. like you know hundred thousand dollars like there it's just not gonna like you're not you know you're gonna yeah. need to really like yeah. put that money right back into what you're doing yeah, yeah. So. and if you don't put the money back into it you're not going to be able to grow it and it's just gonna or you won't have a store yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. Certain point, you yeah. Know. do you plan to rehire any of your previous no, employees not at no? All. nope nope <laughs> totally nothing, nothing against team. them at all but need a complete fresh start don't want to bring in anyone that i know don't want to have friends working for me mm -hmm. and i just need to have a much better process really think through it i don't care <laughs> if i have to sit through a hundred people through an interview mm -hmm. just to find one out of them like that's yeah. i'd rather put the time in to do it the right way and find someone that's really what I need than to waste my time way overpaying people that right obviously as a boss like what are your takeaways for when it comes to like managing a team like I you heard about I heard a little bit about like meetings and kind of like take you know having yeah, different strategies I mean, and you know when I first started I never had any employees at all so it was right. just a lot of trial and error and just learning throughout it I wasn't the best boss most of the times but I tried as hard as I could and and oh, well, I don't know. I, at some points, I didn't try as hard as I could, and that was the issue. Is I needed to put more effort in that instead mm -hmm. of. It's just hard managing your time and focusing on so yeah. many different things because, like, right now it's really tough because I don't have any employees. So it's just I'm trying to kind of outsource people, and like I said, connections are so valuable. Just mm -hmm. kind of build up connections. Like, I, okay, I built up this connection, this connection here. So I'm gonna hit up all these people while I'm in this place and have them help me out. And yeah, yeah I'm just thankful for all the connections that I've made and everyone that's helped me out throughout the journey. Cause yeah. right now it's like, I need to film a video. I need to edit the video and then like release the video, have the thumbnail made, but then I, I bought the shoes. So now I don't have a lot of cash flow anymore. So I need to figure out where to sell the shoes. It's just like so many jobs yeah, at once. Yeah, a lot of moving parts, yeah. Yeah, at this point, like if I'm spending three days editing a video and I only make 120 bucks, like, is that really worth it? Why? Why wouldn't I just pay someone to do it for me? And I'm here with the boy Trippin. What's going on, man? What's going on, Cam? How you doing? Good, man. Good. So he's actually been editing the videos. That I think a lot of people know that at this point. I can focus my time on what's mm -hmm. actually going to make me money. But it's just tough because I'm such a perfectionist and I feel like no one can ever see my vision exactly yeah. how I see it. But that's just not accurate. I could work for 24 hours a day and still feel like I didn't do You're enough. And it's, yeah. it's just yeah. tough. So yeah. 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 Well, I think that's interesting and I look forward to seeing you kind of grow as a boss Thank too. You. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, and that's just something that most entrepreneurs have to go through. So yeah. What has the transition been like from owning two locations at one point and now you're yeah. back to zero? It's been a lot. And I mean, it's really made me see things more clearly than ever and not to yeah. ever take anything for granted because you really don't know how good you have something until it's gone. So mm -hmm. it's just something I would never take for granted again. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back, not only get back to the point, to where I was at, but I want it to be even bigger and better than it's ever been before. Yeah. So, it just so you still feel like the water. you still feel passionate about reselling and yes, all that sort of absolutely. stuff. It seems like your sort of journey, kind of the way that it went, has more or less like kind of reinvigorated yeah. your passion for it. And that's why I almost feel like I do think everything happens for a reason. That's why I don't want to say I wish I would have just done everything different. Obviously, mm -hmm. I I somewhat do, but I think it happened for a reason, and I think that could have been one of the reasons and yeah. I just need a fresh start and just to do it the right way this time. So yeah. 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 So looking back, what was like the biggest thing you learned after everything you kind of went through? Well, I've definitely learned a lot, but right. one of the biggest things I would say, like I was mentioning earlier is just the valuability of, is that even the word valuability? The value. value. I think value. Yeah. Okay. Right, right, valuability. I, I think yeah. we're doing too much. Right there. I, I, I'm, I might be overthinking it, but no, just, you're you're just the value of, building customers and then yeah, yeah. just not to take anything for granted because tomorrow isn't guaranteed. You never know what's going to mm -hmm. happen. So just never take anything for granted. Always be grateful for all your opportunities and always make connections from those opportunities. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know you said you wouldn't change anything that you did because mm -hmm. you think everything happens for a reason. And the butterfly effect is real, people. Yeah. Watch Back in the Future. Great Scott! Great Scott! But um, <laughs> if you could go back and change what you did, yeah. if you could, in a hypothetical world, what are the things you would do differently? I was going to say one thing, but yeah. there might be a couple. I, I mean, there's thousands of things I'd probably do, <laughs> but I, would, I wouldn't have ever expanded. I, well, not ever. I'm saying, have, like, yeah, I, see, that's I the thing. Yeah, uh, maybe it was just too soon. Yeah, at that point, and I wouldn't have opened a store in Dallas. I would have just, hmm. I should have just stayed in York, just kept being consistent and just building that up, and I think it would be bigger than ever now. I might have wanted to 
expand in York, just get a bigger location there. That right. that could have been a better idea. Yeah. Who knows? But I don't want to think too much like that because the past yeah. is the past. You yeah. can't change it. And mm -hmm. I want to think more so what I'm going to be doing going forward and how I can do it better and totally. bigger. And that's more totally. the mindset that I have yeah. right now. Yeah. So. And obviously, we're just here to get like a clear explanation like kind of on what your whole journey was yeah. and everything so you know and i think it is interesting and it's good learning learning lesson for everybody you know just yeah. to know too like kind of mm -hmm. what your path can be just you know yeah. in business it can go any direction and there can like, be yeah. one little thing that can just make everything spiral down yeah. like you never know what yeah. it is that's well, why you yeah. have to always do you think you have like do you think you know what that one little thing was for you like just in terms of kind of like that's, yeah that's tough i mean for me i i wouldn't necessarily say it's one little thing i think mm -hmm. it's just a big mixture of things just all together so i don't i don't think there's just one thing yeah, yeah. okay why are you still in dallas is there are you just there is that just it's where you live now it's a good reason i don't know why i'm there i'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna be there very much longer i'm okay. gonna okay. move back to the east coast i don't necessarily like the weather on the east coast yeah. but i like the business side of it it just makes sense my best right. clientele is on the east coast i feel like for the most part so because that's just where I started with mm -hmm. the York store, and that's what made me. So I need to, I'm not going to go back to York if anyone's wondering that, but I'm <laughs> going to open another store on the East Coast. I don't know oh, okay. where yet. So, cool. okay. yeah. That's new news. Yeah. Got yeah. a little insight there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I've been throwing hints at it throughout videos and stuff, but right. yeah. Right. Had you ever considered during all of that just how tough the journey kind of has been for you? Have you ever considered just leaving the sneaker industry? Mm, not necessarily. I mean, I've been at points to where like I just want to give up, but just I'll find some point of motivation. I don't know what necessarily it would have been, but yeah. I I would never. I'm not a quitter. Like I would never just want to just completely quit and be like, no, I'm not doing this because yeah. honestly, there's nothing I'd rather do. I can't even. I don't want to say nothing, but like. I would never want to work a corporate job. I would never want to do anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am interested in other things. I've always been passionate about music. I play yeah. the drums. And she actually told me that she yeah. plays the drums too. So yeah. that's, I, yeah. that I told him, I said, Cam, I have a fun question. Yeah. So if Cam's Kicks wasn't selling sneakers, what would Cam be doing? Yeah. It, that's the question you're asking yes. now? Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. It, that is a tough question because I just can't even picture myself doing right. something else. If at sneakers this point. didn't a thing, if we didn't have feet, yeah. we couldn't wear shoes, what would Cam be doing? I've always been interested in filmmaking too. So maybe something. Okay. With that, yeah. maybe being a director of sorts, or, or... me and you can have a have a drumming, <laughs> yeah, have a drumming, drumming business, business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where we teach drum lessons. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but I am passionate about music. Shout out to all my so. percussionists out there. Yeah. <laughs> were you okay? Were you like on the like snare and bass always, or were you like a bells guy? Uh, I didn't really like the bells as much. I yeah. like drum set. The big upcoming news for you is your next door. Yep. Um. So I've heard East Coast. Yep. But do you have any ideas on like a name? I really don't. I, that's something I'm gonna have to really think about, and I've just been so busy. Like, I, as simple as a name, I really haven't even thought about that. Like I said, it's not gonna be Cam's Kicks. My right. YouTube channel is gonna be Cam's Kicks, but mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna call the store yet. That's a kind of, I think, pretty important thing to yeah. think about. So I, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's just gonna okay. have to. Be is there anything different that, that that we can kind of expect to see? Like, are you? I, I'm, I'm assuming you'll still have the buyback videos. That'll be like your biggest. Yeah. No, I want. I don't want it to be different. That's the whole thing. Is there's been too much stuff that's been different and okay. kind of, I want to get back to how it originally was like just very simple content, like not trying to do too much extravagant things. And I mm -hmm. love doing that type of stuff. So I'm not going to say I'm going to completely just stop that, but maybe yeah. only once a week or a couple times a month or something like that, where I do something completely different. But right. I want it to mainly just be a steady camera angle, like st not steady, stationary camera angle mm -hmm. that you can see me, you can see the customer, you can see the shoes. And that's pretty much it. Just cool. as, as raw as possible just negotiating on shoes right. that's what made me and that's what i want to get back to so right. and people are like we we hate this new content like you <laughs> we just want you to get back to this but it's like i don't know what you expect when i don't even have a store anymore i'm yeah. doing the best i can and yeah. I, i'll get back to it just i think I, I think your pop-up in every I state know. i think that's cool that's cool yeah thank you no i appreciate yeah. it as yeah. of right now it's just not generating any crazy numbers it's not what i thought it would do so it's just like i i don't at this point, I don't know what people want to see, and I think it's clearly just me in my own store, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. buying shoes. And like I've said before, too, you can't please everyone. So it's like, no matter what I do, people are still going to say stuff. So I can't be thinking like that. But, right. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks, Cam, yeah. for everything. Yeah, thanks no for problem. being thank here. You. I appreciate yeah. you inviting me out here, too. I know. Yeah. yeah. You've been a great guest. Thank you. Um, well, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Yeah, um, no I problem. think your journey is, is something that we all can learn from, but it's also mm -hmm. just really interesting you know you business is taking a risk yeah. and that's 
always, always going to be very clear. You know, Definitely. no matter what you're doing, you're taking a risk, you're betting on yourself. Um, so it isn't easy. It, but without risk, there's no reward. That's exactly. How you exactly. Exactly. With the big like Rick Ross said, scared money don't make money. <laughs> no, not exactly. at all. Thank you guys so much for watching. No. Cam has been great. Thank you. Yeah. 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 No, I appreciate you having me again. And if you guys aren't already subscribed to their channel, what, I know. what should they do? They should you probably should subscribe. subscribe. Probably. Uh, well, thank you guys. Yep. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. You guys watching. Appreciate it. Cool, that was good. Cool. It's a wrap. Yeah, it's awesome.